Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to have the opportunity to present a newly released product by Google uh, called the healthcare, the Cloud Healthcare API. And our presentation is specifically about how the Cloud Healthcare API helps it solve the inter interoperability issues in healthcare and life sciences. My name is Sunny Southern. I am the Vice President of Health and Life Sciences for Onyx. And I will, am joined here today by Yasser Drabu, who's our Principal Engineer. Yasser will be speaking a little bit later when we get into more of the technical aspects of our presentation today. So let me tell you just a little bit about Onyx. So Onyx has been a Google Enterprise Partner since 2002. We've been a nine time Google Partner of the Year. We have over 120 Google certifications and we support the full Google stack from Maps to Chrome to G Suite to Cloud Search and of course the Google Cloud Platform. Onyx has been serving customers in the across all verticals since 1992, and we've had the pleasure of supporting health and life sciences organizations on their technical journeys, and then most recently with cloud since 1993. We have customers across the entire health continuum from research to re academic research organizations to traditional healthcare facilities. We do a lot of work in the genomic space, medical device, pharma, and then health IT and health startups. With our new health and life sciences division that started in, two, in 2018, we are able to marry Onyx's deep technical cloud expertise around strategic consulting, application development and modernization, data engineering and insight, cloud security and governance, with very specialized healthcare and life sciences experience in genomics, imaging, population health, Behavioral health and patient engagement are a few of the key areas that we focus on. Hundreds of health and life sciences organizations have trusted and chosen Onyx as their cloud partner. Some organizations that you may recognize, like the Broad Institute, which is one of the premier genomics organizations in the world. Most people recognize the National Institutes of Health, which is one of the biggest funders of research in the United States. And of course, Harvard Medical School, Emory University, University of Southern California, Community Hospital Corp, which has um, about 50 hospitals across middle of America that really helps to make sure that people wherever they are in the United States in those very important areas in the communities have access to good health care. And then Phillips and Clearbrook. So let's talk a little bit about cloud adoption in the health and life sciences space. I can tell you five years ago, there was still a big question about the security of cloud and what the value is to healthcare organizations, primarily because of their fear of security. But today, and this recent stat even demonstrates it, that more than 84% of health IT executives are already using cloud to, to store sensitive information. And why is that? Because of the security and redundancy that the cloud offers. And now with the release of the healthcare API, we also can tackle a very, very critical issue in healthcare and life sciences, which is interoperability. So the Google Cloud Healthcare API, let's talk a little bit about that. So it leverages the most widely used uh, formats for healthcare data, Fire Fast Health Interoperability Resources, HL7B2 and DICOM, and then provide some very specific services that are critical for healthcare organizations as a whole and really support interoperability. So de-identification, um, really minute and granular security controls, and then all of this gets stored in the Google Cloud Platform so that you can apply the amazing technology around analytics and machine learning to not only allow the data to flow in a secure way, but also so that you can leverage the insights from that data to help future-proof your organization and better understand how you can leverage that data to um, really provide great insights about your patients in the clinical environment. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Yasser to tell you more about a specific project that we're, we're doing for Google around the healthcare API. Thanks, Sunny. As uh, Sunny was saying, the confidence on using the cloud for storing more sensitive information is an upward trend. But uh, one of the uh, one of the reasons for that is obviously the convenience that the cloud offers, which is the primary use case. You know, whenever you're trying to think of interoperability, we are looking at some sort of a standard like HL7 and the newer FHIR protocols to help. Um, you know, get rid of the siloed medical information that's stored in various uh, EMRs. 
Now, when somebody wants to get into uh, interoperability, the challenge really comes uh, down to how do we set this up? How do we scale it? How do we secure it? And make sure we are compliant along the way. Google Healthcare API, a subset of that, which is the FHIR API, allows to make this possible even for smaller organizations and smaller practices to start um, you know, exposing their data to, uh, for research or for you know, sh uh, sharing it with other healthcare providers. The question obviously becomes before this is put into play, how does somebody who is doing application development or somebody who's trying to implement this do this without risking some misconfiguration? So uh, we had the same questions when we started as how do we test it? How do we scale it? How does it meet our needs? There was the first questions we asked because we do app dev for uh, many healthcare providers. And so th that started this exercise and, uh, you know, working collaboratively with the healthcare API team to identify an experiment that we put together to kind of say, this is how we could set it up. So what we did was on the uh, cloud platform, we um, we set up a, a program called uh, Cynthia. It's uh, developed by MITRE to create synthetic, uh, real looking, but fake, but real looking patient data that's driven from census, uh, census information. So it, it provides a very, uh, realistic looking um, uh, data on which you can actually test your, uh, you know whatever you're trying to do so we we basically uh, put this pipeline together where we uh, we created different workloads from Cynthia for addressing one of the main concerns usually when you start uh, doing a project of uh, where you're trying to figure out scale and interoperability the first thing is uh, you you need to go through a lot of uh, you know a lot of hoops to get to the actual uh, PHI and there's always the concern that during development what this is exposed so uh, Cynthia actually makes that easy so we can actually create realistic looking data that uh, stops uh, uh, that concern in track and you can still build out your whole solution without having to worry about uh, uh, any such concern. So uh, in our setup, what we did was we uh, we used the compute instances to generate the synthetic data, stored that data, which is uh, uh, in the FHIR STU, uh, I think, three format in uh, in the uh, in cloud storage. And from there, uh, what we did was we uh, uh, we loaded that data into uh, the uh, the FHIR store, which is a concept in the healthcare API, the FHIR store essentially takes um, you know patient data and stores stores it in a, uh, in a way that it's easy to retrieve and it follows this uh, uh, the same set of API and protocols so that it makes it easy for other systems that can consume and uh, interact using that protocol to pull and push data uh, uh, into the system. So uh, so imagine there's a proprietary uh, you know, uh, EMR. They can simply write a translation into this FHIR store and make that data accessible through the right kind of permissions and credentialing to other organizations. So that's where uh, the, um, you know, it may, uh, uh, this, this API makes it super easy to uh, uh, connect patient data between uh, uh, desperate systems. Now you could, uh, again, coming back to the previous, you could actually do that using uh, traditional IT infrastructure, but again, then scaling that, securing it, getting getting the uh, certification that Google already has in place for high trust and HIPAA, but, you know, but they would have to still go through all of that, which seems uh, very counterproductive and slows down the whole process of innovation. So uh, what we did uh, in this case was we took the Cynthia data, uh, loaded it up into uh, into the FHR store, and then uh, ran certain tests at different workloads. We we wanted to see how well it could scale, so we went all the way from a small subset of 10,000 patient records with um, all the way up to 10 million. And at different points, we collected how it would respond to searching, querying, inserting, deleting, so that we could show that in this platform scales or does not scale, but either way. So the way we uh, went about it is we actually, to run Cynthia, we needed to launch some compute instances and depending on how much data you want to create, we've made some recommendations in a, in a follow on slide as to what the size should be, at least that, what we needed. And then we took this data and stored it uh, in uh, cloud storage. Uh, as a, a holding place, we, you, you know, uh, if 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 the organization is working on multiple projects, they can store and standardize the storage as the source of 
pulling data for different projects if they need. So that's why we created this interim step. So we don't have to regenerate this data because it takes a significant amount of time to generate 10 million records. So having that pre-prepared can then that that can be shared on across multiple projects or uh, you know um, uh, multiple uh, workloads that somebody is trying to do. So then finally, uh, this data gets Im imported through other compute instance into uh, uh, you know into the uh, store using using uh, using a couple of commands that are provided through the API. One of them is the import command. And the second is uh, you create command. If it's a small data set, um, we will recommend using uh, the create command uh, on, on one-off basis. But if you are doing a large insert, you can use the import function, to, which is much more efficient. And you can actually bundle uh, different sizes of uh, uh, records. You know, If you're doing a batch update, you can create a bundle and then execute the bundle through the import, making it uh, far more efficient to load data into the FHR store quickly. Um, then finally, we created a standard set of test scripts. You know, we uh, at each load, let's say at 10,000 records or a million records, at each point we we ran uh, a test scripts. These test scripts were, uh, you know, applicable to the different APIs, which we'll show in the next slide. And then we collected uh, data from those test scripts and stored it in BigQuery for uh, analyzing the performance. Here are some of the APIs that we tested, like at each load point or each measurement point or load profile, we essentially did a create, we did a read, uh, we did conditional delete, we pulled patient everything record, we did some uh, searches with increasing complexity, right? You know, like searching by a certain, uh, you know, if you're looking for female patients uh, who are between 40 to 60 who have osteoporosis in their diagnosis, then those incre increasingly more complex searches uh, to uh, run them across different load profiles to see how quickly uh, the FHR store would return uh, re return results for them. So then conditional updates, you know, uh, on a subset of a patient record and so on and so forth. All of these were uh, tested. And then every time the test was run, we essentially collected the response time from start to finish. Uh, some of these calls are asynchronous. So we actually waited for the call back to uh, you know, tell us how long uh, it took to finish that execution. Once that was done, we stored that uh, in uh, in uh, a BigQuery to uh, to basically then be consumed for visualization. We are actually using uh, for the, uh, you know using Data Studio to then pull data from BigQuery to visualize different uh, results and performance graphs. So that's basically the experiment, and we really are using uh, Cynthia from Micro to. Uh, Simulate the patient uh, patient data. It, it really has uh, helped a lot in uh, some of our projects where we're trying to uh, test for scale uh, and even uh, getting more realistic data while we are trying to build uh, healthcare applications without having to worry about starting real PHI. This is an example of how you know what it took for us to uh, generate just to give a sense of scale. Once you run Cynthia for a certain population, that uh, you can specify uh, which census data you want to follow, or you can go down to the city or uh, you know metropolitan area level to specify uh, uh, where you're trying to draw the patient, uh, you know, uh, big data from. And here, here you can see it's, it takes about uh, to generate about 10 million records. Uh, we needed about 50 terabytes just to get a sense of scale, uh, 50 terabytes of storage just to get all the necessary, uh, you know, patient data created. And then that's the compute instance we use to generate that, that much uh, data. We are currently still working from 10 to 100 million uh, with the Google team because this requires some uh, work on the FHR and uh, the score as well. So this is just to give some magnitude scale, magnitude numbers. So the goal really was to create a repeatable, scalable process so that uh, we can, you know, uh, accelerate development and show other uh, other teams how we can quickly uh, uh, spin up this uh, FHR store and start creating interoperability solutions for whether it's research or uh, you know uh, internet share. And then we're also going uh, based on this, we are uh, working on creating this. Uh, an appliance which will be publishing to the, uh, you know, to the marketplace where people can simply with one click get all of these uh, Cynthia engine and uh, be able to simply point to their uh, FHR instance and load the data directly and we'll take care of 
the orchestration on the back end to the uh, market-based plants. So they're making it even faster for uh, you know either researchers or developers to uh, use the Google Healthcare API. Yasser, thank you for explaining the experiment in detail. So hopefully you all have seen how the healthcare API, our discussion related to the healthcare API, can really help to solve the inter interoperability issue for healthcare and life sciences organizations. Um, if you look at the two components of our experiment, one is an important point, part is the using the Cynthia data so that researchers, data scientists, and developers can get started with the healthcare API and with Google Cloud Platform and basically build their applications almost to the point of full execution. They can test, QA, et cetera, before they have to accept live data. And we all know that in our space, it takes a while to get through the appropriate permissions internally, the people side of healthcare, not the technical side, so that we can make sure that we're getting that healthcare uh, clinical data to actually productionize the application. So this should accelerate the process and allow many people, researchers, data scientists, and developers to start using the healthcare API quickly um, and then get the permissions for the data later in, in the process. And then the, the um, output of a repeatable and scalable process leveraging the healthcare API will also help these different groups to be able to take our work and duplicate that within their organizations. And then all of this together really helps to realize what we've all been trying to do in healthcare for so many years, which is to securely share that information with the right person at the right time so that physicians can make the most informed patients about how to care for patients and patients can make the most informed decisions about their own care. And thanks to the Google team for creating such a, a seamlessly available application that runs in the Google Cloud Platform. So it takes all that complicated work that Yasser mentioned, how it has to be done before the healthcare API and essentially makes that available in one click. Now we have the ability to help enable physicians and patients to access their healthcare data to make the best decisions, to drive the best outcomes in ways that we could only imagine a short time ago. Thanks everybody.